following is a once in a lifetime opportunity to visit with a real witch in her natural element. Sharon Graham has been featured in newspapers, magazines, and on television, but this is the most honest, open, wide ranging interview she ever gave. Less than a year later, the Black Cat bookstore was closed. Shortly thereafter, Sharon Graham mysteriously disappeared. Sharon, you are originally from Salem. Yes, I am. I was born in Salem. Born here? Born here. And through your childhood here, mm -hmm. you always believed in witchcraft? Uh, witchcraft was not brought into my life until I was about 12, 13 years old. And the word witchcraft. Uh, and as a child, did you develop different uh, powers or? I was brought up Roman Catholic, so, and uh, um, we were taught not to, uh, as a woman, to be silent. I see. So, but did you feel as a child that you had different feelings or different uh, forces? I was, yes, I was a different kind of child, um, but I was brought up by the women in my family who were very folklorist, and I guess they hid behind the Roman Catholic Church. Um, they were herbalists, they were midwives, they were very spiritual women, however they were very curious women. Mm. And curious, what do you mean by curious? Um, they taught how to grow the herbs, how to grow the food, um, what to do with the herbs as a medical or a medicinal way. Um, as a spiritual background, we were basically Roman Catholic. Um, my uncle was a priest who taught the priesthood. And it was in the very, church, in the Roman in the Catholic church, church. In the Roman Catholic Church, and we were very silent as the women. But then, in other words, yet as a priest, as a Roman Catholic priest, he knew that there were powers of I'm supernatural force. I'm sure they all know that, but they don't discuss it. I'm sure they know that's in every family, but they don't discuss it. So, as you say they don't discuss it, does that mean that that is a, a power that they would have as far as protection? Well, that keeps it from the humanity becoming more powerful than the church. That's my opinion. I see. So, is there then, as far as a witch, a good witch and a bad witch? Is that the question? Am I a good witch or a bad witch? No. And <laughs> just in, in, as people seem to think, are there good witches or are there bad witches? Well, I can only tell you my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, I think we're all human and we both have good and bad sides. When people ask me if I'm a good witch or a bad witch, I tend to tell them that it depends on my mood. Uh, uh, if I'm in a bad mood, I don't practice. And I tend to tell other people that, too. So it's, uh, it's like, in other words, if we have the flu. Yes. If we have the flu, we... Once we... you know what to do with your magic, after tripping over it a few times, and uh, we believe as witches that we have a threefold law that if you do bad, it comes back threefold. If you do good, it comes back threefold. And when you were, when you were being, when you were, as your childhood, were there other experiences with other children that also were oh, witches? Oh no, I was very much a loner as a child. Lilith be well, chant the spell, Lilith be well. Chant the spell, Lilith be well. Well, the occult traditionally was something that was hidden. And man, in any religious experience, has found that his confrontation with that source had to be couched mm -hmm. in very hidden terms, very occult terms. It wasn't for every common man. And so the religious things that have come down through the ages have been man's confrontation with God. Okay, very simply, uh, we in the pagan movement or in the witchcraft movement have used the goddess 
and have used um, very natural phenomena to represent symbolically what that confrontation is all about. Um, I think that in the United States and in Europe especially, there's been a resurgence in terms of the pagan movement and in terms of witchcraft. And why would this be? Well, I think a lot of people have realized that the old forms of religion, Christianity, Juda Judaism, um, any kind of religion fell short somewhere along the line because there wasn't enough participation in the part of the individual man. Now, witchcraft really fosters the individual man and individual development. And so this is why I think that this resurgence has taken place. People are starting to turn to a more natural way. What does witchcraft mean to you in your life? Uh, well, it gets me really in tune with the universe, with my planet, in terms of the seasons, in terms of the sun, the moon, how I, as one person, relate to these phenomena. Are you uh, a white witch or a black witch? I consider myself a white witch. And uh, the, I think that very simply a difference between black and white would be that as a white witch, I would never do anything to offend another person. Uh, I would never hurt anyone in any... How is your life different now that you're a pagan and no longer Christian? Well... That's a very interesting question. How is my life different from the Christian life? Well, for one thing, in this life, I feel more comfortable within my own skin. I don't have to worry about people judging me. We're all so different. And we have to accept the fact that we're all different. It's a good lesson. I don't have to be exactly like everybody else. I just, uh, I like the logic of this lifestyle, this, this order. I like the idea of it, that we pay more attention to the earth that, where we have been living all these years, and that we have to take care of it. And it, to me, is mother. God formed us out of the earth. Goddess feeds us. Goddess gives us all our resources for whatever purpose. And then we return to her. So you and do, it just makes sense. You believe, so you do believe in God. Just is it a different type of God or? Well, the idea is yes, I do believe in God. The God is everywhere, any in everything, everywhere and everything you look at. All of him. And then you become more comfortable accepting him around you in everything, everywhere you look. The goddess, I cannot believe that a god works alone. He's, you know, if he's my father, then I have to have a mother. And I am nourished and taken care of by the Mother Earth. So I call her mother. And she is my mother, and she gives me comfort. The very foundation that is underneath me is the comfort of knowing that's where she is. She's right there. She's supporting me. So you are a Wiccan. You tell me you believe in God. Not only that, in addition to you believe in goddess. I so, believe in a god and goddess. So there's If you look at a tree or a flower, how did it start? It had to have a seed, and the seed has the covering. And therefore, we put the seed in the ground. That seed is from God. We put it in the ground. There is the mother. We dig a hole. We put the seed in there, just the same way as a man puts a seed in a woman to make a child. Up comes life. We add the elements to it. We have earth. We have air. We have fire from the sun. And we have water. We feed the water to the seed. And the seed starts to grow. 
new life forms. So why shouldn't Christians hate you? Why? We don't know. There's fearful. Well, do you believe in Satan? No. Don't even believe in him. Oh, so no, 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 no. Much no, less no, no, worship no. him, right? So we that... Our read starts out with eight simple words. If you could just follow those words, you can live a normal life. Do what thou will and do no harm. Well, the devil is harmful. Well, it's not our word. It, it, it doesn't even belong to us. That's a demon thing that the church has put there. Do you believe in uh, heaven? Yes, I do. But I believe heaven is everywhere. All over. I believe in reincarnation. And the heavens that we look at, we can look at the Crab Nebula. And we see life starting over and over and over again in that Crab Nebula. Well, I believe that, you know, who knows, maybe that's our, our cluster where we're supposed to go in spirit to the Crab Nebula, become one in spirit, and it just starts all over again, a nova. But you're just supposing. Well, I haven't been to the other, to the other side of my last breath. Mm. I've never been there that yeah, I know Yeah, nobody of. can really, really know. Right. What do you think about people who say they absolutely know? Can they know? Or are they just, um... You know what? Mm -hmm. I can't really know. Mm -hmm. You know why? I'm not in their brain, and I didn't experience it with them. Mm -hmm. I wasn't there. Mm -hmm. And since I wasn't there, I don't know. So, I can honestly say, I don't know. Well, what if they say, not only do they know, they know you're wrong? Let them be wrong. No, they, they think you're wrong. <laughs> well, of course they're going to think I'm wrong. Oh. I'm not thinking like they're thinking. Right and wrong is not what it's about, I don't think. No. Actually, it has to do with control, power. People contrive power. They imagine power. I could take power of you. I will make you do as I say. That's perceived, contrived. It's not real. Why would I want to take control of somebody else? They're capable of making their own decisions. They should let me have my right to make my decisions. Do you think you can take control of somebody? No, it's not possible. There you go. Why not? Because your free will is still there. You have a right to free will. Presumably that's the first original sin. Mm. But I believe it was the awareness given to us and that we must develop our awareness of all around us. It's as if listening to the different instruments right now all around me as they're clanging and listening to each one separately. Listen to each of the sets of bells separately. It's playing beautifully. How they're all playing. Beautifully. If they're all playing, listen to each one separately. That's free will.